Hi everyone, this is James Wong from the Microsoft Resources Tech Team. Today's topic is deployment images specifically for Revit Architecture 2013. I'm going to show you guys how to create the deployment image for Revit Architecture using Autodesk Deployment Wizard using a DFS path, a distributed file system. So as you can see, I already started Revit Architecture 2013. Click on Create Deployments. In the deployment configuration name, I'm just going to call it Revit Architecture 2013 comma 64 bit comma network. As for the administrative image path, I'm just going to browse with Windows Explorer. You can see that I have it on my DFS, microsoft.local slash deployments. I already created a Revit Architecture 2013 64 bit. There's a folder there called content that I created and a Revit 2013 underscore default INI. Content is empty and INI file. I'm just going to explain to you a little bit, but I'm just going to copy this directory or this path, click paste, make sure that the 64 bit is selected, and also these checkboxes are selected, run in silent, as well as created a logs and workstation and network. Just click once to fill it in. Click next, read the EULA, click accept, and click next again. And since I'm doing it on a network license, I'm going to fill in my serial number and my product key. Product keys are found in the subscription center of Autodesk. And I use group policy to manage my licenses, but I'm just going to fill it in with my default. Click next. And the screen's going to blank out. Don't go crazy, don't worry. Let's give it a couple seconds. Before we cl click on create, I'm just going to click on the little drop down. And there's some settings here that are different for 2013. The create desktop shortcut, that's, you know what it is. Things to mention is the customized application settings. The default, as in 2012, the Revit.ini file is created by the INI file.xml. If you leave this at default, but during installation, the workstations will download all the content from Autodesk. Um, it's about 800 megs of content, so every installation will download the content. There's a new option here called Shared Project Template. This, in essence, does the same thing as the default with additional Shared Project Templates. So, there's good and bad to this. So what are Shared Project Templates? You know, every firm is going to prefer to have their own project templates. And you're going to have to customize them. You can use views, styles, line weights, and to find out more about Shared Project Templates, you can go to the Autodesk Wiki page right here. And you can learn how to create the RTE file, create project templates. But what is more interesting is the third option. So let me go ahead and minimize that. The third option is to create a custom Revit.ini file. And you saw that I actually have a Revit 2013 underscore default INI file. Um, this was pulled from a workstation that had a default installation. You can see here that it's pointing to a local path for content. Um, this is really bad. As I mentioned, it's 800 megs. Every workstation, if you have 100 workstations, that's a lot of files being pulled from Autodesk. Instead, I want this content to be stored on my server. So I made a folder called content on my DFS, on my deployment. I'm going to copy this directory. And I want you, that directory to be replaced, replacing all the local directories. So I'm going to do a find replace. Replace with what is the network version? Um, path and replace find what is the local path and there's this ending slash just make sure you put that in and just to verify that the local is find what and the replace with is the network version and once that is confirmed just click on replace all click on cancel you'll notice that all the local paths are changed to network paths and this will tell every workstation to go to the server for content. So this will save a lot of headaches and make standardization easier. I'm going to click Save As and this is not default anymore. This is actually network so I'm going to change it to underscore network.ini. Click Save and minimize that. And to apply it you just want to make sure that the, the, the path is selected. So I'm just going to select that in the end, select the entire thing, do a copy, and paste it on the path, and do an import. When you import, there's one other thing, the project path cannot be relative. So you, we, let's go ahead and change the project path. So let's pull that up again, 
Notice that the project path is going to user profile slash documents. We're going to move it. We're going to move it to the same area as the network. So I'm just going to copy this path here. All right, and then I'm just going to paste it like so. All right, and that looks good. Make sure you save it. And exit out of that. Exit out of that. Click OK and click Import again. No errors. We're good. Scroll down. Not too much things here. Um, since the INI changes the discipline to Architecture, um, that you can leave that alone. Other option is Construction. And check out my other video for an explanation of those two. The content, I'm going to put in US Imperial and US Metric. I'm going to leave configurable folders um, to my INI file. You can see that the INI file is actually being read, which is perfect. That's what you want. Scroll down. I, mean, I don't have any additional files to do, so I'm just going to scroll down for that as well. Since this is 2013, it's relatively new. There's no service packs for it. As far as communication center options, I prefer to disable live updates and I also disable information channels as well as RSS feeds. I don't want to distract my users with too much communication while they work. Access to online resources, I do enable and I also check the include computer name in error reports. That helps us to know that if there's a user that has an error, the computer name and a specific user will show up. So notice that the create button is grayed out. You just have to scroll that one to configure. Close that up and click on create. So the process takes a couple of minutes depending on your workstation. Typically a couple of minutes. You can see that the packages, the distributables for C++ and all the other prerequisites. All right, so now it's finished and it looks good. So I hope everybody found this video helpful. Be sure to check out my blog and YouTube channels for other tips and tricks. Until next time, this is Jane Wong, signing out.